My name is Shona and I own and run Sewisfaction, which is a beautiful fabric shop and sewing studio. And today, as part of our mini Learn to Sew series of tutorials here on YouTube, I am going to give you my top tips for straight stitching. Um, so if you are new to sewing, you've just started, I'm hoping that you'll find this useful. If you're really new to sewing and haven't yet started threading up your machine, then you might find it helpful to watch my other tutorials about threading the top and the bottom of your machine so that you're ready and primed for perfect stitching first. I will link them up here so that you can have a watch of them. And before I start this tutorial, it would be brilliant and I'd be ever so grateful if you would subscribe to the channel. I uh, film lots of videos about sewing, about fabric, things that I've made, giving you top tips and tricks, and also obviously these tutorials. And it'd be wonderful if you could join in with the channel. All you need to do is hit the button down below and it's completely free. If you've already threaded your machine, then I would suggest unthreading it now. Don't worry, it's great for you to get plenty of, plenty of practice anyway. Um, and you can thread it again later when we start stitching properly. But for now, the way that we're going to practice is something that I found really, really helpful for all my students who are learning to sew in the studio. And we're actually gonna sew without any thread in the needle or in the bobbin, just so that we can get used to using the machine. And we're also going to practice on paper instead of fabric. Now, I know that might seem strange, but trust me, it really, really works. So if you want to head over to our blog, the Sewisfaction blog, which I will link down below, we have this really simple but handy sheet which um, gives you some options to practice your straight stitching, your pivot corners and sewing curves, which we'll cover in this video as well. So head over to the blog, download that and print it out, unthread your machine and then we'll get started. Don't worry if you don't have a printer or access to the internet at the moment, you can just use a plain piece of paper, it's absolutely fine. Um, but you might find it useful to use the handout because it's got some guidelines or markings on there that some people find helpful. Now my machine has a little slider here. This is a speed control. Your machine may well not have that. It's a bit like cruise control for your car. The first, first thing I suggest that you do is get to grips with your foot pedal and making sure that you're happy with the biting point of your pedal. So what I mean by that is if you put your foot flat down on the floor, you'll see how fast your machine can go. Pretty fast. My top tip is not to try and stitch that fast. Even when you're a really experienced professional, you do not need to sew that fast. You want to sew at an accurate and consistent speed so that you can keep your lines nice and straight and your curves nice and accurate. So if your machine doesn't have a, curve, a cruise control or a speed control, what you need to do is put your foot on the pedal and then practice putting a little bit less pressure on until you can slow the machine right down without having to cap the speed. I don't want to put so little pressure on that I keep stopping. I just want a nice consistent speed. So that's the first thing that you want to practice. Just make sure you're happy with that. My first tip for making sure that you're stitching accurately is to get familiar with the markings on the needle plate of your machine. The needle plate is this metal part and you'll find uh, that it has some measurements on here and also on your bobbin case. The most common seam allowance measurements are marked on here. So we predominantly use either 3 eighths of an inch or 10 millimeters, one centimeter, which is marked here or five eighths of an inch or one and a half centimeters, which is marked here. And those are the ones we're gonna concentrate on today. So take some time to familiarize yourself with those on your machine. 
I personally find that students find it easier to look at the measurements on here when they're stitching rather than up here because this gets a little bit harder to see. If you don't have any measurements on your machine or they're not clear, what you'll want to do is measure from the needle outwards, so one centimetre and one and a half centimetres, and make a mark on your machine. You can use washi tape to mark the edge or an elastic band, or you could even, if you don't mind drawing on your machine, use a sharpie. But hopefully your machine will have some measurements that looks like this. First thing we're going to do is practice sewing in a straight line. So we're going to take our sew me sheet and treat it like a piece of paper, or if you don't have the printed sew me sheet, just use a normal piece of paper. Uh, we're going to use a 5 eighths of an inch or one and a half centimetre seam allowance, which you can see is a little marking here. So we're going to line up the edge of our paper with this marker. And we're just going to check that there is a small amount of the paper or fabric showing through the oval of this foot. This is really important. You want to start about half a centimetre or so down from the top of the paper. This means that your paper or fabric won't get swallowed into the machine, um, which if you've tried stitching before and that happens and you end up having to wrestle and pull it out of the machine, it can be really frustrating. You can avoid that by starting about half a centimetre down from the edge. Once you're happy that your fabric or paper is half a centimetre down from the top and lined up with your 5 8 marker at the side, you then want to pop your needle down. On this machine I can use this button or if you don't have that button you just need to turn the hand wheel uh, to the right of the machine and that will move your needle up and down. It's important to start with the needle down, it will stop your thread from escaping um, and if you've ever started stitching and found that your thread uh, escapes from your needle then you'll find that really helpful. So all we're going to do is just practice sewing in a straight line. We're going to keep our hands um, as if we were looking at a clock and I'm going to keep my right hand here at six o'clock and my left hand up here at about nine o'clock and my hands are going to act as guidance for the paper. The machine is going to move it through. I'm not going to push it, I'm not going to pull it, I'm just gently going to guide it and keep it lined up at all times with that 5 eighths marker. If at any point you feel like the stitching is going off track, all you need to do is very gently move it back. It's much easier to do that while the machine is still moving because the machine is then moving your fabric through for you. If you try and wrestle it back when you've stopped, you'll find it a lot harder. So just slow down your speed and bring it back to where you want it to be. I'll show you what I mean if it goes off track like this. We just gently bring it back to where we want it to be. And for the purposes of this exercise, you're just going to run or sew off, I should say, the edge of the paper. Make sure you keep hold of your fabric or your paper until you get right to the end. And you can now pop that out. So you can see that this is my straight line. And then there was a the little wobble where I... Uh, showed you where we went off track and then you just bring it back into your straight line. If you find it easier you can hold your paper up to the light and then you'll be able to see um, all those holes and how straight they are. If you want to just have another practice down the other side of your paper and use a few more pieces of paper if you find that that is helpful. My top tip is to never ever watch the needle. Always keep your eye on the measurement marker instead of the needle. The needle is going to move up and down whatever you're doing, unless you take your foot off the pedal, and it can be very hypnotic and quite distracting. It doesn't help you keep your line straight. The best way to keep your stitching straight is to always be looking at the edge of your fabric and this marker here. The next thing that I'm going to show you is how to turn a corner. So when you're sewing a line of stitching and it's got corners in, for example cushions and tote bags, um, 
and in some dressmaking projects, you don't necessarily want to sew one line of stitching and take it out. You will want to sew your line continuously and pivot at the corners. So for this exercise, if you take your sewing sheet and pop it under the foot so that the needle is lined up with your dotted lines here, and then all I'm gonna do is sew down to this pivot point. Just take it at your own pace and remember to stop when you get to that point. Now, what I'm going to do is if my needle isn't already down, I'm gonna turn my hand wheel towards me, that's the wheel at the right of the machine, until the needle stays down through the fabric slash paper. I'm then gonna lift up my lever, my foot lever, and my needle will act as my anchor so that I can then turn my fabric slash paper at a 90 degree angle. Once you've turned your paper or fabric 90 degrees, you can then carry on the stitching downwards. Remember, you want to turn it so that the part of the fabric you want to keep sewing is at the front of the machine. If it's behind you here, you're going to be going the wrong way. So I'll carry on stitching. That squeaking sound is because we're using paper, you won't get that on fabric and we'll just lift our needle up, take our paper out, and there you'll see you have got a really nice neat corner and it's all one continuous line of stitching. Remember, pop your needle down, lift your lever up and pivot at that point. Never lift your foot lever up without your needle being down otherwise your stitching will move and it will be a real mess. Top tips for sewing curves. I'm just gonna give you a little demo on here. My top tip is to always keep the machine moving. Go as slow as you like, but make sure the machine is moving because the machine will help you. If you stop and take your foot off the pedal, you're going to be trying to move the fabric that's actually trapped between the presser foot and the feed dogs under here, and that's really tricky. So just take it slowly, pop your hands either side of the curve that you're trying to work with, and just give it a little go. point you feel like you're going to go off all you need to do is pop the needle down lift your lever up exactly like you did with the corner and just flatten down your fabric or your paper in this example make sure you're happy and then you can start and carry on with your curve and you can see I'm just continuously turning it till I get to the end So once you're happy with your stitching and using the machine, keeping your stitching line accurate and you've practiced on paper, then I would recommend threading up your machine. If you're not sure how to do that, then check out our tutorials, which are also linked down below. Um, and then using some scrap fabric. You can use any kind of scrap fabric, pillowcases, duvet, sheets, any kind of cotton. Don't use anything that's got any stretch in it for now because you just want to focus on practicing your stitching and getting sewing. Um, always practice with two layers of fabric folded over just because um, it makes it more realistic for you. We don't normally just stitch one piece or one layer of fabric. So I'm gonna lift my presser foot, pop my fabric underneath, and again, I'm gonna make sure that I'm starting about half a centimeter down. So I've got a little bit of fabric showing in this oval here, and I'm gonna keep it lined up, the 5 8 marker to the right of my fabric here. And as I stitch, I'm gonna keep looking at that at all times. I'm gonna start by putting my needle down through my fabric to keep my uh, thread secure. And then I'm just gonna take it nice and slowly. And 
using my hands in that six and nine position, never pulling it through from this side or pushing it too much because that's how you get skip stitches. And I'm just gonna stitch down in a line. When you have finished or when you've got to the end of your practice piece, wherever you want to stop, you'll want to lift your needle up either by pressing this button if you have one or by turning the hand wheel if you don't and that will lift your needle up. Then I'm going to lift my presser foot, pull my fabric out. My thread is still attached at this point. You may find that you have a little blade to the side of your machine on the left. If you wrap it behind and towards you, you'll find that that will cut it. But for now, I'm just going to use my scissors to snip that. And there you've got your first line of stitching. You want to check that your stitching on the top and your stitching on the underside both look nice and neat uh, and even. If they don't, my first uh, tip for you would be to go and check how you threaded your machine. Again, check our tutorial for threading the top of the machine and also for how to thread the bottom and bring the bobbin thread up. If you find that you've got a little bunched up thread here or a little bird's nest of thread at the top of your stitching on the underside, then that's possibly because you haven't brought the bobbin thread up before you've started stitching. So watch that tutorial and you'll find that helpful. So those are really simple ways to practice your stitching and make sure that you're happy sewing before you move on to a more ambitious project. So there you go guys, I hope you found those top tips useful and I hope that they've given you the confidence to start stitching. Sewing is such a wonderful hobby for so many reasons and I really, really want to spread the joy of sewing and let everyone know that it's a superpower that anyone can have. If you have found the video useful, it would be wonderful if you could share it with a friend, maybe someone who already sews um, and would be interested in other videos or someone who doesn't that you think might like to get started. Uh, if you are local to us and our studio and fabric shop in Wakingham in Berkshire then it would be amazing if you checked out all of our classes and workshops where we teach everyone from complete beginners all the way through to much more advanced sewing and dressmaking and I'll link that down below. We'd love to see you at a class or workshop, but for now, I will leave you to it. I hope you have a really wonderful rest of your day and happy sewing. Bye.